happens to things you throw away? Have you ever thought about where away is? What about recycling? Where does it go? How does recycling actually work? What plastics can and can't be recycled? Students in environmental science class at Hayes Freedom High School knew that pollution was a problem and wanted to know the answer to these questions. Together with their science and art teacher, they dove into this tricky problem and came out with some artwork to help educate other people about what they learned. So here's what you need to know. We have way too much plastic stuff and even more of it is made and discarded every day. Not all of it can be recycled and very little of what can be recycled actually gets to the right place where it can be responsibly dealt with. Massive amount of plastics are ending up in waterways and oceans where it breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics, but it can never actually be decomposed. Microplastics come from many sources, fibers from washing synthetic garments, some plastic beads in personal hygiene products, plastic that is shipped to other countries to be recycled yet without a market, it becomes pollution to poorer places. Another source are spills that happen while transporting the little plastic beads called nurdles that are used to make new plastic products. And let's not forget about general litter. Toxins like to cling to plastic surfaces, spreading small doses of poison and disease wherever it ends up. Birds and small fishes often mistake plastic for food and their bellies fill up with items they can't digest that frequently lead to injuries and death. The photographer and filmmaker Chris Jordan shared these shocking photographs of bird stomachs literally bursting with plastic objects they've eaten. Even when animals don't die an unnatural death, the microplastic gets passed along up the food chain and now have been widely found in human stool and blood samples. The crazy problem of plastic pollution is so massive that it is hard not to be overwhelmed and shut down. So that's where art comes in. In order for change to happen, we have to recognize the problem and not ignore it. Changing our behavior and speaking up for what we believe in. The artwork we made for this first phase of our project is intended to catch your eye and make you pay attention to the absurd amount of plastic that is all around us. The second phase of our project is education about how to properly reduce, reuse, recycle, but also how to refuse and react to plastic pollution. We were surprised to learn that many people didn't know what the numbers inside the little recycling triangle meant. If you don't know, the numbers tell you what kind of plastic it's made from. Recycling can be confusing because the rules about what can and can't be recycled change depending on what local waste management has the machines to process and also whether or not there are businesses who want to use the recycled plastic. For example, where we live, number one and number two are the only kinds of plastic that can go in the blue bin. We're looking forward to bringing an expert to answer our questions and doing our part to educate others about what we learned. So for now, please enjoy the artwork and ask yourself, what small thing can I do to make a difference?